When I was a young analyst at IDC, I remember sitting in a packed boardroom listening to this new company called Teradata introduce a machine that was specially designed to make databases run much faster at far less cost. At the time, the most advanced disk drive in the world was 2.5 gigabytes and it cost more than $100,000. It was the size of a giant refrigerator. There was not a single data center in the US that housed a terabyte of data, underscoring this young startup's moxie with a name like Teradata. Fast forward nearly 40 years and the company is still going strong. It has a robust tech stack that has been matured and hardened over the decade, over the decades with capabilities around things like referential integrity, sophisticated workload management and support for complex joints and many other factors. Recently, the company's financial performance has been in the news with an earnings and revenue beat in a large part attributed to its cloud business model. The stock roughly doubled in a few days as surprised investors took notice. Welcome to this CUBE conversation. My name is Dave Vellante, and we're here with Steve McMillan, who's the CEO of Teradata, to give us the update. Steve, welcome. Hey, Dave, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Okay, so you're very welcome. So what's happening with Teradata? What's behind the recent surprise and the momentum that you're seeing? Look, Dave, I think over the last um, 12 to 18 months, we've just been continuously improving our uh, cloud capabilities and our the performance of our cloud business. Um, I took over as CEO of Teradata in June of last year. And um, it's been my pleasure to really focus the company on a cloud first agenda. And what that's really meant is that, um, you know, we've built a great leadership team with some key new appointments, a new chief product officer, a new chief strategy officer, um, and most recently, a new chief uh, revenue officer to really build up our cloud credentials um, and capability. We've also done things like completely invert our R&D spend. So we spend nearly $300 million on uh, research and development every year. Um, but previously, our focus of it, only 30% of our spend was in cloud. We flipped that around to have 70% of our investment in cloud and 30% on-prem, uh, enabling us to do things like uh, go uh, general availability of Teradata in Google Cloud in Q3 of last year. And lots of these investments and, re and moving that investment uh, envelope has really enabled us to put forward Teradata as a very relevant modern cloud platform for our customers. And that's enabled us to win in the cloud fairly significantly. And um, we always knew that at some point we would declare to the street what our cloud revenues were, but we wanted to make sure that they were substantial and relevant. And we felt that at over $100 million of ARR and with an outlook to double that this year, uh, that those were, the kind of, uh, those were the kind of metrics that were going to get the market and our customers' attention in terms of us being modern and relevant. I got a lot of questions based on that. Thank you for the, <laughs> yeah. for the upfront. But so let me ask you, so you took over as CEO less than 90 days into a global pandemic. And so how much did that affect your thinking around cloud first? Did you come in you know, before that knowing this is the direction you're going to take the company? Was that accelerated? Can you comment? Look, I think taking over a territory, you pointed out in the introduction, a 40 year heritage of essentially inventing the uh, enterprise data warehouse marketplace. I, I knew I was taking over a company with a fantastic heritage and a fantastic culture, a set of people that are absolutely focused on and are incredibly proud of Teradata's technology, its capability and how it can really, how Teradata helps transform how businesses work and people live their lives through data. What, what I saw is um, uh, we had to really focus on what our mar the market and our customers were uh, looking for. And that meant re-emphasizing the importance of cloud inside the company. So it was really a lot about focus and then about developing the culture of the, co the company to be able to execute. In terms of the pandemic, I think um, the pandemic has, has acted as a, an accelerant to digital transformation as organizations want to use data to help uh, optimize how they operate, make sure they're operating effectively and efficiently uh, one of the customer examples that we had in our last quarter was an, an airline in the US uh, investing in Teradata technology to do just that. You know, as clearly a distressed industry 
but they see how the power of data can optimize their supply chain to enable them to work more effectively and more efficiently. Great, I want to get into some of those customer examples. So, so but I, I want to stick on Cloud First for a minute. So it sounds like Cloud First is a mindset, but then leads to sort of investment priorities. And, and there are some pretty prominent companies that you know, had a switch from a sort of on-prem to a Cloud First men mentality. That, I mean, Microsoft is the most obvious, but there, there, there are others. But so what really does Cloud First mean for your customers? Well, what it means is um, we really think about um, the, the future digital strategy of our customers. And clearly all of our customers want to embrace cloud. It's also about uh, you know, data gravity. Where is data moving to? And uh, we see the data gravity um, of many companies. You know, we focus on the top 10,000 companies in the world where you know, they're operating at that level of scale. Teradata can really give them the right kind of solution that meets their business requirements. Um, but as that data gravity is moving towards the cloud, it really means that we have to be in front of that and we have to have the, the technology in place to capture that data as it moves to the cloud. And so our, 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 the vision from a product perspective um, in terms of cloud first is to be the leader from a connected multi-cloud data platform uh, perspective. And I each, each component of that product uh, description is really important. Connected in terms of being able to access data either in native object store or in lots of different data uh, sources. Um, Multi-cloud in terms of being available across all of the cloud platforms, but for our existing customers ex extending and reaching into their on-prem uh, capabilities. And from a data platform, thinking about it in terms of the services that uh, Teradata has been known for, in terms of enterprise data warehousing, but also real data analytics capabilities that we've built into our core SQL engine. So super excited about um, the future of Teradata in this cloud first world. Yeah, so that definition of cloud, by the way, of course, is evolving, as you well know. And, and I spent a fair amount of my time trying to squint through earnings statements and figure out, okay, what's exactly in there? So $100 million in ARRs, that's, that's a pretty big number. I mean, for a lot of companies, that's like, they're getting ready for an IPO if they're doing that kind of ARR. So what is in that cloud number? I presume there's a hybrid you know, uh, a component of that, but can you help us understand what's that definition? Yeah, no, we were very careful with that because we didn't want to, we wanted to be assured that we were talking to you all about cloud and being true cloud. So that is just our revenues of um, uh, our Vantage product running in AWS or Azure or Google Cloud. It doesn't include any private cloud or hybrid cloud environment. So we wanted to be really specific about this is success and the hyperscaler environment and the public cloud environment. So I, thanks for asking that question, yeah, I, that's great. And thank you for the answer. That's really important because there's so much cloud washing going on. And, and, and so it's good to hear that you're making that a clean, what you call the true cloud number. I would, I would agree, that's a great way to look at it. And of course, you know, there's, there's a lot of evolution going on in, in cloud and on-prem and, and, and from a hybrid standpoint out to the edge. Do you see, so is your cloud strategy to be compatible with the cloud native, AWS, Azure, Google, maybe Alibaba someday. But is your strategy also to try to cross connect those clouds in some way, which is a kind of metadata that's, challenge. Maybe you could talk about that. Yeah, that's exactly that. Uh, when I use the term, you know, connected multi-cloud data platform, uh, that, that's exactly the point. We see c companies want to have a data fabric that spans across uh, either, from on-prem if they've got on-prem, but they want to span across that, uh, that, those public cloud environments. Our perspective is that companies seem to have cracked you know, how to use compute transparently across multi-cloud environments. Our perspective is we want to give that same ability to essentially federate data across, uh, across a multi-cloud environment. Because the CIOs I talk to, uh, and I'm sure you do too, Dave, they, they want optionality in terms of cloud provide, they don't want to be locked into an AWS or an Azure or Google. They want to be able to you know, keep a competitive environment, competitive sourcing environment, be able to use the right services from the right cloud provider. So 
uh, from a Teradata perspective, one of the other key things about our cloud focus is we're starting to think about Teradata Vantage as much more of a platform rather than a product. And so, you know, we've got 17 uh, integrations in the product to native cloud services in uh, Amazon alone. We've got 13 in Azure and 12 in Google Cloud where we utilize and enable our customers to use those native cloud services in the way that their DevOps teams have become very accustomed to. And I think that level of integration that the, uh, our R&D spend has enabled recently is really positioning in our customers' minds the ability for Teradata to be modern in terms of that DevOps and for Teradata to be at the core of their data architecture. And then from a, providing a fabric perspective, um, we've really invested in what we called our query grid technology to really be able to federate queries out across multiple cloud environments. Um, and we've put a commercial model in place that, uh, that we charge per query. So we don't charge for, you know, per megabyte of storage that you, we charge for successful query execution. And our thesis says, if we open the Teradata platform to as many data sources as possible, our customers are going to want to query that data, connect it together, and get unique, valuable insights that they can't get anywhere else other than using a solution like Teradata. What? So we're super excited about yeah, that. I, I'm excited too. That's kind of the holy grail because if it, 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 another thing CIOs tell me, Steve, is, is like, look, we've spent a decade and our developers, they, they got the cloud native thing. They know how to optimize for AWS or Google or Azure. They, they, we, we got that. What we need is we need to enable the businesses. So if you can abstract away that complexity, that's innovation that they want because they want to go faster. And this notion of a federated query, I think what I'm hearing is you, you've got the, you're building out the knowledge to wherever the, the, the query should be serviced whether it's you know, remote or local on AWS or Azure or Google or on-prem, you're going to be able to service that query in the most efficient manner. Is that kind of the vision here? That's the vision. That's exactly it. It is a connected, we enable a connected data fabric, a multi-cloud for our biggest customers who are always going to have an on-prem uh, capability. It can reach back into the on-prem uh, system for the data that's stored still on-prem. Um, in terms of the data that travels across with that, it's only the output of the query, so you don't need to duplicate queries. Uh, you don't need to duplicate data in lots of different places. But not only that, to, to your point, that this is all about business outcome and use cases. And the 40 years of experience that Teradata has in terms of helping customers know how to use data to solve business problems, they get that in the cloud with the Teradata that they know. And so that whole, if they want to migrate from on-prem to in the cloud, if they want to federate, we can give that range of options, layer on top our industry and use case experience uh, to deliver a fantastic overall cloud migration experience to our customer set. I like the pricing model too, because essentially you're, you're charging for value. I mean, I think you look, we've gone through decades and certainly the past decade, a lot of SaaS companies have done really well. But it's kind of a one-way street, and and so the 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 charge per query really is a sort of to me anyway a, 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 a gain share. Customers win, you win. You know, as long as you're delivering a good product, they'll they'll stay loyal to you. That's right. I think uh, our customers are saying uh, that pricing model relates directly to business value. Um, and uh, the total cost of ownership of uh, the Teradata technology is, is much more efficient and effective, gives a much better TCL, especially with enterprise scale, either data volumes, data, uh, data complexity or query complexity or query concurrency. Um, and they've, it's interesting, I'll reflect back to your opening remarks, right? Um, and not very many people use this. We were born on-prem. But what we're finding in the cloud is that's given us a bit of advantage because we are used to squeezing every bit of performance out of the storage and compute and the Teradata system. So in our core SQL engine, our workload management and query optimization uh, means that we don't run away with the consumption of compute and storage. What we find from a native cloud provider solutions 
as to solve these really enterprise scale challenges, they spin up more compute or spin up more storage. And it's an exponential increase in terms of the total cost of ownership. Whereas we believe we give a much more predictable cost profile and performance profile utilizing the technologies that we honed on-prem. Yeah, that's an important point. I mean, look, Ter Teradata is by, by design, it's, it's architected to be a perfectly tuned system. I mean, and, and so back in the day, where it was $100,000 for 2.5 gigabytes, you had better architected it that way. And so, you know, the prevailing way to solve these problems today, there's a lot, a lot of ways to skin a cat, but just throwing resources at it is the, is the other way. And that, as you pointed out, can get a little bit out of control. It makes the CFOs nervous. <laughs> yeah. Um, on the earnings call, you referenced two customer situations where you beat out Snowflake for the deal. I wonder if you could add some color and elaborate on that. Yeah, we, um, uh, we've been working with a number of customers that have kind of kicked the tires on uh, cloud native uh, solutions. And um, we're delighted to see some of them become recommitting to Teradata. And I think there's really a couple of reasons for that. One is the challenge of migration. Um, like I, th I think Snowflake mentioned that in their earnings call yesterday about the challenge of uh, migrating enterprise workload. From a Teradata perspective, because what you get in the cloud is exactly the same as what you've got on-prem, we can lift and shift, and then we can look to modernize once it's in the cloud. So it's a dramatically different approach. So there's no interruption to the business users. So it's less risk, less cost, quicker time to value from a migration perspective. So one of those wins um, with a, an e-commerce company in the US was because the, the new CTO came in and said, those 70 engineers, they, what have they been working on for the last 12 months? And um, it was about migrating from, uh, to try and migrate Teradata workload to a, a cloud native solution. And um, it's like, why don't we just use Teradata in the cloud? Um, which was a logical question. And we were delighted to help them with that, uh, with that answer. And then the, the other example really was about um, the, the projected cost of running in the cloud and how expensive it was going to be once that organization had scaled up to the level of uh, queries and execution that they were looking, uh, that they were, uh, that their enterprise was going to be generating, and also from the growth trajectory that they were anticipating, just from a total cost of ownership perspective, Teradata made a lot of sense, and uh, that probably would surprise quite a lot of people out there who have always considered Teradata as, you know, being reassuringly expensive. What, what we're really demonstrating now is when we think about it in terms of query execution, and as customers try out alternative solutions to execute the kind of queries at enterprise scale that Teradata does every day, we are actually a really good uh, price performance uh, player. Yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody w would ever question your database chops. I mean, I think people were, were trying to understand, and, and I myself was trying to understand, okay, what happens to the on-prem business? And you're sort of connecting the dots there for me. It, it, so my question is, what are your on-prem customers, what's their motivation for moving to the cloud? Are they actually leaning in? Are they, or are they kind of, many of them putting a brick wall around their on-prem and sort of carving out a, a, a cloud agenda? How do you see that evolving? Look, I think, um, uh, and I'm talking about existing customers rather than winning right. new customers here. Our, our existing customers are can, going to continue growing their on-prem environments. You know, if, if you look at the market analysis, it says, you know, between one and four percent growth per annum for the existing on-prem traditional technologies. Um, so, and we expect that we expect Teradata to more than gain our share in terms of that one to four percent market share growth every year. Um, but really, the growth, the thirty percent uh, plus growth in terms of year-on-year data growth in the cloud is really driven by, you know, uh, that DevOps approach, wanting to utilize uh, first party cloud services to augment the technology development that's going on um, inside organizations. Also, as data starts moving into uh, SaaS environments, being able to do the analytics of that data that's already in a, in a cloud environment and a cloud environment starts to make a lot, a lot of sense. So we are investing in connectors to you know, um, the Salesforce, the service now, so that you can have access to that data from uh, from Teradata. So we think that hybrid approach from, and many of the biggest companies in the world is going to continue to make a lot of sense. Um, but the big growth, and I think uh, 
the, is going to be in, the, in those cloud environments. So as I model, my meta model around Teradata is really holding serve on that on-prem business, you know, low single digit growth, keep that stable, and then you're growing very, very rapidly in the, the ARR model, the cloud business, and then at some point, you got, you know, what's Teradata, 1.8 billion in revenue, somewhere around there, so you, you got a ways to go before that, that, that cloud business is, is, is as large as the on-prem business, obviously, but that's the opportunity. And we've seen a number of companies transition you know, through that uh, very successfully. You're obviously communicating to the street. They, they, they like the story. There seems to be some upside. People are, you know, the investors are saying, wow, this is an undervalued company. I've, you don't have to Yeah, no, absolutely. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I, 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 what I would say is we, we look at um, you know, our current ARR, we, we know that we're going to have a stable base of on-prem ARR for the foreseeable future. Yeah, um, and we'll have, but the the ability to migrate some of that ARR to cloud is low hanging fruit in terms of growing our cloud ARR. Um, but then what we've seen is once we migrate an on-prem customer uh, to the cloud, it kind of unlocks the Teradata environment for that customer because remember, we usually run all of the mission critical production workloads. And so that system is like tied, tied tightly down. You don't, if you're the CFO, you don't want the, the marketing team like uh, disrupting your month end uh, running. Yeah. Um, but when you're in the cloud to run those ad hoc uh, queries or ad hoc um, uh, analytics capabilities, then you can, we can spin up and we can elastically grow, you know, more compute, more storage, so that that workload can be satisfied while still protecting those critical uh, meshing critical workloads in the core SQL engine. And um, so we're seeing the expansion once we move some of those workloads to the cloud and some of those customers to the cloud as being really, really significant. Um, so expanding uh, the ARR that they did have on-prem when it lands in the cloud, it's, we've seen more than 50% expansion rates. I mean, I see the future, you use the term, I think, data fabric. I see the future as, you know, data warehouse, data warehouse, data lake, call it whatever repository you want. Those are just nodes in my mind uh, within that fabric. And you, you mentioned marketing, you know, if, if I'm in the marketing department, I want my own data. I have the context, I know what, what I need. I don't want to be subservient to some, you know, complex data pipeline and data scientists and get permission. I just want to, I want to I want to go for it and create data products and so so yeah. it, so I, I, my last question is sort of that's there's my sort of simple vision how do you see you know the future Look I think um I I'll give an example of uh, telcos who are increasingly trying to move to be techcos and um how orchestration of data across multiple silos in an enterprise can create significant enterprise value. So if, if you imagine the IoT use case, 5G um, deployment strategy, you've got all of these 4G handsets out just now, telcos want to know where all of that usage data is so that they can mine that usage data into um, customer usage patterns to then influence their capital allocation strategy as they build out 5G networks. Yep, so it takes data from the consumer level and puts it into a corporate planning process on the really back end of the company. And so we believe with our connected multi-cloud data platform and our outstanding capabilities in data warehousing analytics, we can get those kind of most complex use cases delivered to our customers really successfully. Hey Steve, great story. It's clear to me you got your priorities straight. So uh, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE and sharing your story there. Dave, it's been an absolute pleasure. I hope to do it again. All right, you got it. And thank you for watching everybody. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE. We'll see you next time.